Okay, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, welcome to BWTM Sports. So we're talking about Alexander Usyk's long-awaited heavyweight debut. If you haven't subscribed already, please do hit the subscribe button, do hit the smash the like button, and um, yeah, let's get on with this. So Alexander Usyk made his long-awaited debut last night in Chicago against late replacement Chaz Witherspoon. For those of you who don't already know, uh, BWTM have followed uh, Alexander Usyk predominantly because of our relationship with James Elibashir, who trained uh, Alexander Usyk up to becoming WBO Cruiserweight Champion of the World. So we do have an understanding of who Alexander Usyk is, his decorated amateur background, and also his professional career and understanding a bit more about the man. Um, and he's also been on our show a couple of times as well. So a bit of a coup there before he became WBO Cruiserweight Champion of the World. So we're not talking about Alexander Usyk as if we are different, um, distant from things. So let's get down to business and talk about Alexander Usyk's performance against Chaz Witherspoon. Now before I talk about that performance... I have to back a few things up here. Because when you're looking at the performance, depending on who whose eyes you're looking at it from, is dependent on what they thought of that performance. If you're looking at it from the perspective of as a casual fan, <laughs> then um, you won't have been impressed. And I'll tell you why. Because you're never impressed. Unless... It is a one-round knockout job or it's a situation where, um, you know, it's one, so one side you could blow smoke up the other person's ass. Or, you know, I just think that we need to take a step back a second. So here's the thing. If you talk to the casual, the casual will tell you, He's not big enough. He's not strong enough. He don't punch hard enough. Uh, but these casuals are the same casuals that will look at that, that forget about Evander Holyfield. That forget about Mike Tyson. That forget about Michael Mora. That forget about uh, Ali. That forget about uh, many of the great heavyweights that have gone uh, through the generation. This. This business about being not big enough is garbage. It's absolute garbage. For people who don't watch boxing and don't understand boxing, size doesn't matter if you can fight. If you can't fight, size doesn't matter. Um, if you can't fight, then size doesn't matter. Again, I would suggest to you all, go back and watch Michael Moore against Mike the Giant White. There's a guy that's very big, couldn't fight a lick. And Michael Mora destroyed him. Mike the Giant White, seven foot tall, and however many stone outweighed Michael Mora. He's just the bigger they are, the harder they fall. I remind you again of heavyweights that are big. Ustinov, Vac. They were never world heavyweight champions of any note, were they? They're big guys, aren't they? They're huge guys. They're giants. I didn't see no dominant run from them as heavyweight champions. Um, they were not dominant champions. So these people talking about big, big guys. And even Valuev. We've just seen it recently. Valuev. Um, the heavyweight champion of the world. Getting absolutely outboxed by Vander Holyfield, and then they're not Holyfield not getting the decision, and then looking at the situation with um, David Hay outboxing Vander to become heavyweight champion of the world. So I don't want to hear any nonsense about people being bigger. It's either you can box or you can't box, and I don't want to hear no more on that nonsense. So if you want to take that, he's not big enough kind of context and story, take it elsewhere. I don't, I'm not really entertaining it anymore. I've given you three or four examples of guys that are big, big guys. Um, 
Okay, Lennox Lewis, heavyweight champion of the world. You know, six foot five, six foot six. Got knocked at by Hassan Rackman and Oliver McCall. Goals guys are what, six two, six three. They're not the biggest heavyweights in the world. Lennox got knocked out twice by two of those guys. Okay. So I really don't really want to talk about size anymore on this channel. I really am not going to get into that conversation. And so many heavyweights, um, 6'2". I mean, Uncle Bashir's told this yeah, over and over again. Those guys, 6'3", six, 6'4", six, good size heavyweights. You know, when those guys start getting 6'5 and upwards, he said to me, he's noticed the anatomy of these guys. Their chins are not the greatest. Um, so... I'll take it from someone who's trained multiple heavyweights and has got experience in multiple heavyweights. So I look, Sammy Peter was six foot two, six three, and he was able to drop the guys like Vladimir Klitschko. So I, I don't want to hear this talk about size. Boxing skill matters. Okay. And here's another thing. They talk about Usyk now. Well, the same people who turn around and say, well, Usyk can't punch. Are the same people that turn and say, well, Wilder can punch, but he can't box. So you know, you've got Usyk can box. They don't like Usyk because he can't punch hard enough. So now you've got Wilder who can't can't box well enough, but he can punch. You see, these kind of critics, right? There's no pleasing them. There's no pleasing them. So again, they have to stick to one side. So now actually look at Alexander Usyk. He's had his first fight at heavyweight. You've got all these judge, all these people judging, making judgment calls on Alexander Usyk. The guy's had his first fight at heavyweight. He hasn't fought for the longest while. His first heavyweight against a guy that wasn't even considered. Let me turn this off a second. Okay, who, who, who a guy that wasn't even um, who wasn't even a. Uh, Excuse me just for one second. Telephone ringing all the time. Annoying. But yeah, he, uh, Chaz Witherspoon wasn't even, he was came in at a last, last notice, uh, a late replacement for Chaz Witherspoon. So, um, and I think about that, I think, well, he's a late replacement. Usyk, um, is having his first fight at heavyweight and everyone is expecting this dominant, destructive performance. The guy's had his first fight at heavyweight. Now for me, Chaz Witherspoon came in to do a job. So first of all, congratulations for Alexander Usyk for making his debut in the heavyweight division. It'll bring much um, needed uh, skill base and challenges to the top heavyweights, the first thing. Second thing, um, thank you very much for Chaz Witherspoon for sticking around for seven rounds and not just falling over the first time Alexander hit him. And that's good. It's good work for Alexander. And, you know, I guess Chaz Witherspoon might get more opportunities as well in the process. Chaz Witherspoon came in of the understanding of what his role was. Chaz Witherspoon's script was to come in the ring, give Alexander some rounds and just fill the card. That's what his job was to do. Uh, under no... Uh, it was never the script for, Alex, for uh, Chaz Witherspoon to come out and try to rip the script up. That wasn't the script. And it wasn't, you know, you would see from the minute Chaz Witherspoon came out to box, he was boxing behind a, a, a jab and just trying to, you know, stick around. The sparring mode almost. And um, occasionally he'd shoot out the old right hand I did notice in one of the rounds that Chaz Witherspoon hit uh, Usyk flush and Usyk uh, backtracked, which was interesting. I don't know if he was, if he was hurt or he was just being sensible to get himself out of range or get himself out of being stung by any more big heavy punches. It's the heavyweight division. One punch can change everything. So I did notice that when he fought Witherspoon. Um, so that was interesting. Again, I saw the hand speed of uh, Usyk, the footwork moving in and out, back you know, side to side, lateral movement. I liked a lot of that stuff. Um, so, and Chaz Witherspoon was exhausted, but <laughs> make no mistake, there'll be a lot of better heavyweights that will be exhausted trying to catch Usyk as well, especially if they're flat-footed like um, our friend 
Chaz Witherspoon. Witherspoon didn't come with any ambition to win. So it was um, for me uh, to be expected that kind of performance from Usyk. But don't let that performance fool you. Chaz Witherspoon didn't come with the intention to win. And hear me when I say this. He didn't come with the intention to win. And he may have got caught with something early in the fight that thought, you know what, this guy hits a little harder than uh, than advertised. I'm uh, going to I'm gonna step back and I'm just going to stick behind my peekaboo defense, take it and then throw the odd right hand to keep you off me. And that's what it was for me. That's how I saw the fight. Um, but um, I guarantee you now, if people decide to bring the fight to Alexander Usyk, they're going to walk onto shots and get knocked out. Wait. Charles Witherspoon did not come to lie down. That was not his intention to come to lie down. His intention was to put on a good showing, not get knocked out, you know, and then potentially in the future get more fights with the Zone. Maybe fight in the UK against someone like a Dave Allen or even a Dirk Chisora or a, a, a David Price. Or So I think we'll see more of Charles Witherspoon. So I'm not... I'm not too fussed about Chaz with this one's performance. And to be honest, I'm not really too bothered about Alexander Usyk's performance. Because for me, it's not an excuse. First fight in the heavyweight division. Get his foot wet, uh, feet wet for the first time against a guy that was negative. Um, but there'll be those who decide to have a, have a go. and think, ah, yeah, I'll take that Usyk. He didn't look too great. And that's where they're going to run into a heck, heck of a lot of trouble. Because you see, when you, when you come forward, you start walking onto counters. And that's where you're going to see the best of Usyk. You don't see the best of Usyk when he's got a guy like Chaz Witherspoon, who pretty much was negative. So the first outing in a heavyweight division, moving up in weight for the first time, fighting live as a heavyweight for the first time since, I don't know, since the amateur days, or the world boxing series, whatever it was. You know, to me, good performance, good footwork. At this level, for me, I know it's one punch that, that ends everything in heavyweight boxing, but I was appreciative of Usyk's boxing ability. Yeah, he might not be the biggest punch in the world, nor was Evander Holyfield the biggest punch in the world. I didn't stop him becoming an undisputed heavyweight champion of the world. Ali wasn't the biggest punch in the world. I didn't stop him becoming heavyweight champion of the world. Okay, and a lot of others I can mention that weren't the biggest punches in the heavyweight division. Chris Bird wasn't the biggest punch in the heavyweight division, still become heavyweight champion of the world. So if for one second you're thinking because Usyk doesn't punch hard enough because he knock out Chaz Witherspoon in a few rounds, it probably wasn't even in his best interest to knock Chaz Witherspoon out in a couple of rounds. Because let's be honest, if you look at the way the script has been written, or what it seems to be for me, is that Usyk was going to fight Joshua after Joshua had beaten Ruiz, that was the plan. I suspect this will still be the plan. So if Joshua can get past Ruiz, you'll see Joshua versus Usyk. Mm -hmm. I think you'll see that fight. If Joshua can get past um, Ruiz. And don't pay no attention to all this talk about Usyk fighting Wilder. That's just to generate hype for a fight. Wilder's fighting soon. Usyk's just fought. And it's just to get his name out there. Because Usyk, let me tell you something, he's a character. If he could speak English well, he'd be even more of a character. But Usyk's a character. He's a very mentally strong gentleman. Um, he's a great character, great personality, very spiritual man as well. Um, but yeah, he, he's a really interesting type of guy. He's a great personality for the division as well. So, um, yeah, I, I saw more positives than negatives of Alexander Usyk's performance. Um, yeah, so I'm not here going to bash Alexander Usyk and say, I oh, can't punch and he didn't look great against Chas Witherspoon. I'll say, well done. I'll give you a B for that performance. I think uh, there's a lot more to come. And depending on the opponent, I'll, you know, the fight would have been more interesting was against him against Takam because, you see, Takam would have brought the fight. Takam would have answered more questions for us. He would have answered more questions. The Takam fight would have brought more because Takam would have brought the fight. You see, but when Takam brought the fight, Takam would have got hit with a whole heap of punches. And in that, would have probably got himself knocked out. 
And in some ways, I'm kind of glad the Charles Witherspoon's fight happened because there isn't that same sort of unnecessary hype, you know, um, coming into his heavyweight debut. It's more subdued, which is cool. Um, so for me, skills pay the bills. Skills pay the bills. I'll say it again. Skills pay the bills. And Alexander Usyk, he has bags of skills and talent. And this guy is very serious to becoming heavyweight champion of the world. So I expect him to fight. My prediction is he'll fight better opposition than Tyson Fury. I'm not. I'm not knocking Tyson here, but this is the kind of mentality this guy has got. I think this guy is going to fight. He's going to want to test himself against the best. I think. What's happened at the moment with him, that sprung fight, the attack and fight falling out, the sprung fight, and now this fight, is that I think that they're trying to get Usyk a heavyweight title shot as soon as possible. If I'm Joshua's team, I jump on Usyk as soon as possible, because the more he gets acclimatised to the heavyweight division, the more dangerous he'll be in the heavyweight division. Do you understand? So... That transitional period from cruiserweight to heavyweight, and then you know, after three or four fights where your body's used to it moving around and getting used to fighting. Like, remember, this is a guy that sparred, sparred with guys like I mean, he sparred with Serenko, uh, I believe Susik sparred with Klitschko, he sparred with a lot of guys, right? Heavyweights, big heavyweights as well. So, just because you don't see it, don't think he can't fight a heavyweight, right? If James, Ed if Uncle Bashir is telling you this guy's the real deal, believe it. Believe it. Um, people would like to think or like to hope that Usyk's not good enough. But he's got it there. I believe he can punch. I believe he's got the boxing ability. And I believe if the, the, the more a guy decides to bring it, the more a guy's going to get knocked out. You know, I think a lot of these guys are going to... A lot of these guys are going to exhaust themselves before they get knocked out. On the wild Usyk discussion... Um, there was enough in Usyk there for me to think that Wilder versus Usyk would be a very exciting fight. Um, I saw what the the reaction that Chaz Wizardson brought from Usyk with the right hand. Obviously, Wilder punches harder than, um, much harder than Chaz Witherspoon. So the reaction to how Usyk handles that right hand will be key. Um, but Wilder would never have fought someone that can move like Usyk the way he does. And if Wilder misses, Usyk will make him pay. And we do know Wilder has a tendency to go off balance. And the tendency, we look at the Spilka fight, a fight where I thought that um, Wilder uh, did cause a knockout in the end. But Spilka was doing pretty well um, with those boxing skills. And I think that Usyk's a much better boxer than um, Spilka. I won't make the mistakes Spilka made and will make Wilder pay for the mistakes he makes. That being said, when it's all said and done, if he can't, if he's got an allergic reaction to a Deontay Wilder right hand, well, that's good night, Mr. Usyk. And uh, he will get hurt if he is unable to negotiate that right hand. But we we'll have to wait and see. Footwork is going to be key in that fight for both guys. But that's down the line. Joshua now has a different situation altogether. Joshua's flat-footed and moves in straight lines. And Joshua's great when he's on the front foot frame punches. But with Joshua, when you start putting him on the back foot and making him, and making hitting him back, it's almost the bully mentality. If you look at Joshua, he'll just tuck up. Watch him against Ruiz. When he actually starts getting backed up and getting hit, you don't quite know what to do. You know, you guys are trained to just, when they hit you, they fall, when they hit a guy, the guy falls over. That's what they're used to doing. When a guy starts throwing punches back at them, that's where you start to see what they're really about. And the fights, the real fights that Joshua's been in, Klitschko, Dylan White, Andrew Ruiz, you know, these are fights where we've seen when, you know, guys start to hit Joshua back, it's a different situation to him having everything his own way. And he certainly won't have his own way against Alexander Usyk. 
and if he was struggling with the speed of punch that was coming from um, Riz, what are you going to do with a guy who's got just as fast hands or faster hands than Riz, a better boxing ability, and a southpaw as well? Yeah, uh, you know, Josh just got to hope he catches Usyk with something. He's got to hope he catches Usyk with something and not get caught himself. Because we've seen his vulnerability around the chin. So that's not a fight that, although they're trying to make that fight happen, Joshua and Usyk were trying to make that fight happen. That's not a good fight to make. I don't think. Um, you see, Tyson Fury, now it's a different situation. You've got a guy who's tall and long that has good boxing ability and he's quick for his size. Quick for his size. But then you've got a guy that can box equally as good or better than Fury that is smaller. Um, and again, he's a guy that can make Fury miss and make him pay. Fury doesn't fight, hasn't fought many guys that can make him miss and make him pay the way that Usyk could. So the footwork, how the footwork is negotiated with the Fury fight is another one. But Fury's got the jab and the right hand to keep Usyk at distance. He has, but it's how that fight's going to play out. Interesting fights. All those all those fights are interesting fights. Of course, there's Dillian White. But for me, he hasn't got the boxing uh, ability of a, let's say, a, uh, a Fury. But it has got devastating left hook, um, good body puncher, and um, has a, knows how to rough a man up. Do you know what I mean? And you look at the Joseph Parker fight when, uh, when White fought. Joseph Parker, that's the sort of style I think that, I think White's style, the way he fought Parker, would be the way he'd have to go about fighting Usyk, but with a cross-arm defence, but he'll get hit with a lot of punches because he's sort of flat-footed, but he's got the left hook there, I think he 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 could be a, he could be a problem for Usyk, um, but again, I say this, those who come looking for action and then entertainment, will end up looking up at the lights. Remember I said this about Usyk. Right, let's read this chat now. Let's go read this. Let's go read these comments. Uh, if I see any silly comments, I'm going to skip over them. Can I see all my messages, please? It's the only thing on my phone is it doesn't... Okay, let's see here. Usyk is hard to rough up up close. He's a strong guy. If you think so. If you say so, George. It's Femi's last fight next. It's simple as that. It's That's why it's in Saudi cash out. Interesting, interesting. I like the sound of that. I do like the sound of that. Yeah, it's another thing. Not going to hate on Wilder, but he's the goods. But by the time he fights Usyk, he'll be 35. Usyk, mate, by murder. Uh, don't know about that bit. We'll have to wait and see. Let's see if I can get some... Try and get some comments in here. That'll be interesting to read. Joe Joyce brought lots of questions in 2013, but Usyk answered them. What? Slow Joe Joyce. This was excellent. Belly folded easier than that. He sharpened Usyk's iron last night. He did. I noticed him back up versus Tony too. GGG does it. Sign of a lot of amateur bouts. But with mileage comes experience. Grieve you there. 
He dominated Vladimir for years in sparring. He beat Prime Minister, battered Joyce, battered Mel, battered Bellew, battered Gassayev. And I'm trying to read all this. And I'm trying to read the comments here. Gave Hunter that work. The guy's a savage. I am feel. <laughs> I think he knows that people are taking the mickey out of him. He knows. No one is as skilled as Usyk to answer your question. Um, I think he's a good fighter. I do. Size versus equally skilled opponent. Uncle Bashir is getting better. Yeah, so Usyk did what he was supposed to do. For me, he he did, he did what he was supposed to do for me. Yeah, he did what he was supposed to do. So that's why I see. Um, Chisor Chisora schooling who? Who is Chisora ever flipping schooled? Um, how does Usyk take body in heavyweight division on back foot? <laughs> yeah, well, you sit. I tell you what, brother, Michael Thomas, sit and watch and learn and be educated, because it will move from back foot to front foot. You see, it'll start off the back foot. Fight will come forward to him. He'll tag the fighter. He'll hurt the fighter, and he'll see move on to the front foot. <laughs> that's how you move from back. That's how you move from. Perfect. Usyk knows his English is not perfect, but he has fun with fun with it. Of course, he does with it. And fans like that, such a spiritual playful guy, that can take you a long way. Of course, it can. Listen, Usyk's English is better than than he lets on. Let me tell you something now. Usyk's English is a lot better than people let on. Why do you talk such rubbish? Usyk v Joyce is a rematch is intriguing. What's, there's nothing intriguing about it. Well, what what's intriguing about it? Oh, someone said White is, is the goods. I said Chisora schooling him, so... Oh, right. Listen, Dillian White could have stopped Chisora in that... If you go back and look at that first round, Dillian White had Chisora hurt badly in that first round. But Dillian White kind of sat back, took his time, took his time, took his time, took his time, and then knocked Chisora out. If you listen to the commentary I, for, I did for Chisora White too... I said that the fight was very similar to where David Hay and Chisora. Chisora hasn't improved. He hasn't improved as a fighter. But then, there you go. Um, White is a good fighter. He's a good fighter. Good. Mm. He's a bag of tricks, I would say, that, 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 that um, White is. I won't, I won't call him a pure boxer. I wouldn't call him, I'd call him a mixture of things. Boxer, puncher, brawler. Because he can box a bit. He can punch. He's got that left hook, which is equal to Wilder's right hand. And um, he's laying guys out with that left hook. And and they're in the top 10, these guys are laying out with that left hook. And he can brawl as well. Because that's what he did against Parker. He brawled with Parker. So he's not a slugger. He's not a slugger. I wouldn't say he's a slugger. I think slugger is a very disrespectful term to a guy who can box him better than that. I don't know any sluggers that work behind a jab. And I've seen Dillian White beh work behind a jab. Okay. I would say Dave Allen's a slugger. I would say Dave Allen would be a slugger. But White is not a slugger. He can slug or he's a brawl, can brawl. Who did White knock out undefeated? Who said this? The wonderful life of Bob J. Oh dear. So I guess that you're a huge Fury fan, let's say that. Meaning that because Fury knocked out two guys that were undefeated, that, that means that because you knock out an undefeated guy, was Ali undefeated? I tell you, what is going on with these people? What is going on with these people? Oh dear. 
Okay, hold on. Sluggers don't catch and shoot, though. He's decent skilled, of course. He's not a, he's not a slugger, so I, I reject that. Sorry. Oh, dear me. Okay. Um, I'll, I'm not even getting to that. Um, so, yeah. I look forward to seeing Dillian White's next fight against whomever it is. Uh, Ali never got knocked out. What has that got to do with this conversation? Absolutely nothing. But anyway. So, yeah. Um, as a matter of fact, speaking of the subject of Ali, I've got some unfinished business to deal with. That reminds me. Yeah, um, tune in later. Because I'll be talking to... He is a slugger, average at best. Oh, my <laughs> word. I'm going to talk about that. I will talk about that fight. I will talk about that. I will talk about that. Yeah. Um, right. I think I'm going to end this chat now because it's just pointless. Um, this random talk going on now. So, yeah, that's it. Good performance from Alexander Usyk. Solid from Chaz Witherspoon. Um, workmanlike, I have to say, and um, congratulations, Alexander Usyk. Welcome to the heavyweight division. And uh, as for Chaz Witherspoon, look forward to seeing you fight again um, soon. I'm so glad you don't have the personal address of some of these guys when they start making their fanciful statements. Good showing him. Dylan Wright is very much underrated. I cannot believe he's knocked out. By the way, Dylan Wright's fought better opposition than the linear heavyweight champion of the world. Let me put that in perspective. The linear heavyweight champion of the world and Dylan Wright. Look at the fighters that Dylan Wright has fought and look at the fighters that Tyson Fury has fought. Because I know you, some of you guys in here, the reason why I'm saying because some of you guys here are Fury fans. And I have to just remind you that why you're calling Dillian White a slugger, and I know it's Fury fans that are saying this crap, I know it's Fury fans, and are biased. You know what I mean? I have to pull you up on it and say, who was Tyson Fury's last three, last three fights? Okay, take Wild out of the equation. You still believe that Usyk beats Wilder? I believe he's equipped to do the job, yes. I believe he's equipped to do the job. I believe he's got footwork, hand speed, punching power. And he's a far better boxer than Molina. He's a far far better boxer than Molina, far better boxer than Spilka, far better boxer than um, Donit Brazil. Far better boxer than um I mean he he has better hand speed than Fury and has better footwork than Fury. And I think he would counter uh Wilder much better than Fury did. So I don't believe that uh, Wilder just goes out and hits him out and knocks him out in the first round. Sorry, I don't believe that. I do believe that if Usyk has an allergic reaction to Wilder's right hand. That's going to be a problem for Usyk. That being said, if Usyk can evade that right hand, if you take that right hand away from Wilder, yeah, he's got an excellent jab. But if you take the right hand away, which is Wilder's key weapon, take that away. If he can take that right hand away, we have an interesting fight. We have a very interesting fight. Well, I totally disagree with you. Well, you can totally disagree with you want. You're wanting to disagree with me. 
Uh, good in, good stuff, Ingram. Educated assessment as always. Yeah, you know I mean, I just is it, is it, is it, is it here? Who on Wilder record or White record is better than Vlad and Wilder? Well, the fact of the matter is, how long has Dylan White been chasing Wilder? So don't bring that into the equation. And Vlad retired. So I, I don't know what you're talking about. He's taken on the best possible challenges around. So since the since the Klitschko fight and the Wilder fight. Since the Klitschko fight and the Wilder fight. It's what have you done for me lately? And what Fury has done for me lately is... Otto Walling, Tom Schwartz, what have you done for me lately? And now we'll be defending this linear heavyweight championship of the world in the WWE in Saudi Arabia. What have you done for me lately? Stop talking about that Klitschko fight. Stop talking about that Klitschko fight. Stop it. Plus, we all know Dillian was never a mandatory until recently, but we does have fear. F He's had better fights than Fury. Stop. Stop it. He's had better fights than Fury. Don't come here with his Fury talk, man. And if it wasn't for that slow count for a referee, Fury would have been another one knocked out by Deontay Wilder, and we wouldn't be having this conversation. So the referee is the reason why he's still talking about Fury. Otherwise, he's been knocked out, and we move on. So, listen. I've never seen anybody put on, I've never seen anyone put on a boxing masterclass looking up at the lights. There's only Fury fans that believe that you can put a boxing masterclass on looking up at the lights. I, I, don't, I don't get that, but it's okay. Your time will come. Okay, listen to me. My simple Mr. Ranks, I'm saying this to you. Take the punching power away from from Deontay Wada, right? And you just give them boxing ability. Who is the better boxer between Deontay Wada and Alexander Usyk? And the better boxer between the two of them is Alexander Usyk. He is the better boxer. He has the better boxing fundamentals. He has better, better, he puts his punches together better. He moves, uh, he has better lateral movement than Wilder. He is, he has a better ring IQ than Deontay Wilder. That's a fact, you can see that. What makes Deontay Wilder the big player in the heavyweight division is that right hand, that atomic right hand. That when it lands, it causes serious problems. But let us pay, please pay, pay, bear in mind, his first fight against the Southpaw, Luis Ortiz, how that fight was going. He wasn't quite having it all his own way. But I told you all. That he was going to blow. Luis Ortiz out of the water. You got it in the end. Right. Those people that are still around saying. Ah oh, well Luis Ortiz had him hurt in that round. Well we're getting the rematch now. So you're being satisfied. So. You know. Wilder was ready to run that back straight away. With, with Fury. And Fury decided to jump to top rank. So that's the way I look at it. And Fury wasn't too keen to run it back with Klitschko. That's another reminder. He wasn't quick to run it back with Klitschko. And he isn't quick to run it back with Wilder. So, um, yeah. And if you watch that fight of Wilder and Fury... I remember commentating it while I was getting closer and closer and closer to Fury. And the closer Wilder was getting to Fury, the less Fury was able to do about it. That's why I saw it. But, um... I think it's an interesting rematch, if it happens. But again, Alexander Usyk, well done. Congratulations. To, to uh, Chas Witherspoon... Uh, congratulations as well, and uh, congratulations to Vlad Serenko, who I look forward to speaking to later today.
that's it for now rate subscribe leave your comments as always we're out of here take care